the second degree analysed, part two. There are four features that could be found in both the alchemical text, Mutus Liber and the rituals. I referred to the first and second in part one, and I will now talk about the third and fourth. The third feature is to be found inside the book. It is the Jew, the Aqua Sapientiae, thought to be the prima materia. In early alchemy, three elements formed the core of the magnus opus, mercury, sulphur and magnesium. Because magnesium was both difficult to work with and dangerous, it was later changed to antimony and then salt. These three elements, mercury, sulphur and salt, were then subjected to a seven-step process of dissolution, fermentation, distillation, etc. And at each step, the materials would change colour. The alchemists identified five main colours. <clears throat> Black, digredo, white, albedo, yellow, citrinus, and the end product, red, rubedo. There was a fifth mysterious multicolour stage that sometimes appeared after the nigredo called the peacock's tail, the cauda pavonis. The alchemical process is the heart of the second degree, which is represented by the flight of winding stairs, consisting of three, five and seven steps. These in turn represent the three elements, the five colours and the seven step alchemical process. The fellow craft ascends the staircase, meaning to complete the work, to enter the middle chamber to receive his wages or reward of the corn of nourishment, the wine of refreshment and the oil of joy. However, we learn from Mutus Liber that in fact the fellow craft is actually receiving something else. The wages of corn, wine and oil are taken from the Bible. The hint to the real wages is to be found on the frontispiece of Mutus Liber and they come from Genesis and Deuteronomy. <clears throat> At the bottom left of the ladder on the frontispiece are words written in a simple code, which is actually mirror writing, uh, 211, 82, NEG, etc. When reflected, they read Genesis 28, 11 to 12, which refers to the story of Jacob's ladder. Genesis 27, verses 28 to 39. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 13 to 28. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine also his heavens shall drop down dew, corn, wine and dew. These hidden references to the dew refer to the alchemical ross, the morning dew. This may be the key to understanding the second degree that John de Sagalier wrote about in the Constitutions of 1723 that he called the key of a fellow craft. Many alchemists believe that the dew contained a unique salt that helped activate sulphur and mercury, and though it was never decided upon, they believe that it should be added during the final rubedo stage of the work, though others recommended the albedo stage. The red and white roses on the frontispiece may be a reference to this fact. The fourth hint found in the Mutus Liber is the three-part process used to make the Philosopher's Stone, which may be the reasoning behind the introduction of a third degree. For a mason to complete the great work, he must also undergo a three-part alchemical process, the three degrees. Plate 14 of Mutus Liber shows the triple furnace with the inscription in Latin, pray, read, 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 and read again, labour and discover, with two alchemists making a sign to keep this knowledge secret. The final plate has the inscription saying, now that your eyes are open spiritually, you can depart. 
So we can see that the ladder of stairs, roses, dew, and the three furnaces have all been borrowed for the second degree. This is not the whole story, there is more, but it serves as a starter. I mentioned in a previous video that there are 24 signposts in the ritual pointing at greater truths. Well, here are four of them. The three steps, five and seven, and the oil. When you start thinking in alchemical terms, the steganographic clues start to become visible. Personally, I also believe that the Masonic term Jew God does not refer to God, but means what it says. God is the alchemical Jew. But as it sounds French, it serves as a very good red herring. Now we have to ask ourselves, how are these alchemical lessons used by Masons? For what benefit? For the first and third degrees, there are other alchemical texts that have other important features in them, and I leave those up to you to find. Thank you.